All right, this is the Math Models QCA4 or um, District Assessment 4 review. I've already done some of the exponential problems for you there in other videos. So I'm going to start with number one. It tells us to simplify. So we're going to do 7x distributed, negative 7x distributed with the 2x and with the 5y. That's going to give me negative 14x squared because x times x is x to the second power and negative 35xy. I'm going to bring down this 7xy, it's positive. I'm also going to distribute the negative 4x to the y and to the 3. So that's negative 4xy and negative 12x. Negative 4 times positive 3 is negative 12. So now I can combine like terms. All of these three middle terms have an x and a y, so they can combine together. Combining means adding and subtracting. So I just have negative 35 plus 7 minus 4. And so I get negative 32xy. And then I'm just going to bring down my terms that I did not combine. So negative 14x squared and negative 12x. And so that's my final answer. <laughs> number two I already did with you in the other video. So we're going to skip down to number three. It says, what are the approximate solutions to the graph? This graph is a parabola, which means it's a quadratic. And so the solutions are the x-intercept or the roots or the zeros. Those all mean the same thing. And so they are here and here. And it says approximate, which means we don't need to do anything mathematical. We just look and it looks like it's at about x equals 1 and about 2, 3, 4, 5. x equals 5. So those are my two roots or my two solutions. Uh, we did 4 and 5 together on... no, we did 4 together. We'll do 5. It says what are the roots of the graph of this equation? So, there we go, now you can see it. So, the easiest way to find the roots is just to use your y equals key. <clears throat> We're going to type in x squared minus 7x plus 6, hit graph. I can see it's going to have two roots or two solutions. It looks like they're at 1 and 5, but I can double check to make sure by looking at my table. And remember, the zeros are where the y is zero, or the roots. So we have 1 and 6. Positive 1 and positive 6 are my two answers. So the two roots are x equals 1 and x equals 6. Or I could write them as 1 comma 0 and 6 comma 0. That's another way to write that same answer. All right, turn the page. Number 6. A function representing the area of a rectangle is this. Find the dimension or the factors of the rectangle. So they did length times width to get this area. This is my area. And so they're wanting us to factor it and figure out what is the length and what is the width. So I know that I'm going to have x and x to make my x squared. But really I should do the box method to make sure that I know exactly what the factors are. So that's my x squared. My last term is positive 21, so that came from there. And then I need two factors of 21 that are going to add to give me 4. And actually, there's an error on this problem. This should be a minus sign, guys. Everyone change that to a minus. So this should be a negative 21. So I need two factors of negative 21 that are going to add to 4. So I'm going to start going down the list. So I have 1 times 21. I have 2, no, that won't work, 3 and 7, and those are the only factors of 21 that I can think of. So now I'm going to think to myself, okay, which one of these would I add up and be able to get positive 4? And so if I change this to a plus sign, negative 3 plus 7 is positive 4. So I'm going to use negative 3x and positive 7x as my two other boxes. It does not matter where you put them. So then we can start figuring out what our factors were. The factors were the things on the outside that we multiplied to get this. So I know to get x squared I did x times x. 
<clears throat> and then to get my negative 3x, it would be x times something here. So x times negative 3 is what I would have had to put to get that negative 3x. And then to get my 7x, it was something times x. Well, that would have to be positive 7. So 7 times x gave me 7x. And then just to double check, 7 times negative 3, yes, that does give me negative 21. So my two factors are x minus 3 and x plus 7. Now on the test, you're going to want to make sure you check this. And the easiest way to check it, you could, of course, di distribute, double distribute, or do the box method and solve it. But the easiest way is just to type it in. I'm going to type in my original problem for x. Remember, we changed this to say minus 21. And then I'm also going to type in my two factors. And once I have those typed in, if I hit graph, the parabola that I see should be the exact same parabola for both. That means they're equivalent. So as long as I only see the one parabola, then I'm good. And you can zoom out if you want just to make sure. And there's my one parabola. And now it's graphed both of them, so we're good to go. Everything on here matches up, and so th these are the two factors. That's my length and my width of my rectangle. <clears throat> okay, we, we're skipping over 7 and 8. We've already done those. Number 9. Winston is riding his bicycle from his house to his friend's house. His trip is graphed below. It shows us the distance he travels over certain periods of time. Put the letters for each segment in order from slowest to fastest. So think about this. Slowest would be a small distance in a long amount of time. And fastest would be a long distance in a small amount of time. So when it goes the smallest distance in the longest amount of time, that's when it's going slow. So this is pretty slow. This part right here, its distance hasn't even changed. It goes from here to here. Time kept going, but they didn't move any distance up. So B is the slowest. And then D is also the slowest. They're, they're both stopped. This is stopped, and this is stopped. So it really doesn't matter which order you put those in because they're both stopped. They're the same speed, zero. Then A is slower than C because A is a shorter distance in a longer time. And you can see for C, it's from here to here. That's a bigger distance in, a sh looks like the same amount of time. So A and then C is the fastest. All right, number 10, find the result of 16x to the 6th y, z squared, divided by 4x to the 3rd, y to the 5th. First thing I'm going to do is I see a letter with no exponent on it, so I'm going to put a 1 here to hold that place so I don't get confused. Then I'm going to remind myself that these regular integers, these regular numbers, just follow regular math rules. So 16 over 4 means 16 divided by 4, which is 4. So I just divide those regular. Then I look at my variables with my exponents. The 6 and the 3 are both powers of x, and I can subtract them. So 6 take away 3, 6 minus 3 is 3. So we also have x to the third power. And I'm going to subtract my exponents on my y variable as well. 1 minus 5 gives me y to the negative 4 power. Since it's a negative exponent, if I want to make it positive, I can flip it down to the bottom. So it's going to be y to the positive 4 in the denominator down here. So we've taken care of that. We've taken care of that. We've taken care of that. And all we have left is this z squared. Nothing goes with that, so I'm going to leave it on top as z squared. And so that's my final answer for that problem. All right. Number 11, Thomas received his monthly paycheck. His total pay for the month was $2,000. Before the withholdings, withholdings is the stuff that they take out of your paycheck. What percent of his monthly paycheck was withheld for income tax? Income tax was $180 out of his total pay of $2,000. And so that's going to be our percent out of 100%. 
So we don't know what percent that is, but we know it's out of 100%. So you can solve this multiple ways. You can solve it by cross multiplying if you know how to do that. Uh, I like to go ahead and divide this out. So I get 0 0.09. And then to get the x by itself, it's right now it's being divided by 100. So the opposite would be to multiply both sides by 100. So I'm going to multiply this by 100. And that will give me my x, which is... 9%. So 9% of his total pay was in his income tax that he had to get taken out. Number 12, which type of correlation is displayed by the scatter plot shown of gasoline remaining in tank versus miles driven by different vehicles on a single tank of gas? Um, so you can't really see the points, so I'm going to put them on here. Okay, so there's your points. This trend is going down. As the miles gets bigger, the gas remaining gets lower. So this is negative correlation. <laughs> and um, the points are pretty close together. They, they follow the same general trend. They're not super spread out. You could draw a line, and most of those points would fall really close to that line. So I would say this is a strong negative correlation. <laughs> Number 13, the area of a rectangle is 36a to the 6th b to the 3rd square units. If the width of the rectangle is 6a squared b units, what is the length? So if we remember that area of a rectangle is length times width, and they want us to find the length, to get the L by itself, we're basically we're just dividing both sides by width, right? So to solve this for length, I just need to take my area and divide it by my width. So my area was 36, and my width is 6a squared b. So now I can solve that problem. Just like before, we're going to divide the, the integers, the whole numbers. Just regular divide. 36 divided by 6 is 6. Then we're going to subtract our exponents. 6 minus 2 is a to the fourth. And we're going to subtract these exponents. Don't forget that this b has, a, has an exponent of 1. So 3 minus 1 would be b to the second power. So that's my length of my rectangle. And you could check that by multiplying this length times this width, and you should end up with this area. <coughs> Number 14 we did already. It's an exponential growth. If you need help with it, it's in the other video. And also number 15 is in the other video. So that concludes your review. If you need to go back and look at the other videos over the exponential functions, uh, go ahead and make sure you do that and be prepared for your tests.